Bro, I'm encouraged by your attitude and what you brought here today, what you've talked about as far as immediate changes that you've made, and I hope you'll follow through with that. I'm encouraged by the fact that you acknowledge that it's indefensible that the roof was unattended. Would you say the roof being unattended uh, breaches standard protocol for setting up a security perimeter? What I would say, Senator, is that that roof should have had better coverage, and we will get to the bottom of if there were any policy violations. I would think indefensible would go along with breaching protocol, and I can't imagine how indefensible would not be breaching protocol. What I would caution, though, is that I sense, you know, and you're the Secret Service, and these people are your friends, and they are heroic people who do good things, that we can't let our friendships blind us from responsibility. So someone's in charge of the security at the zone. Would, would the Secret Service be in charge of the entire operation, and they work with law enforcement, but they're in charge. The person in charge of the entire operation is the Secret Service, not the local police. You're correct, sir. This is a failure of the Secret Service. So that's what I mean. And look, I don't wish anybody harm. I, I appreciate the bravery of the Capitol Hill police. I was at the shooting at the ball field. I've, I've heard 100 shots coming my way. Fortunately, none came to me. But I appreciate the bravery of all the people who protect us. But there's also the idea that there are certain mistakes that don't make you a bad person, but they're just inexcusable that you, if you made that mistake. So, for example, let's say you determine, well, local police should have been on there and they told us. And local police says, no, they didn't tell us to do it. And it's a he said, she said. Still, ultimately, the agent in charge should be walking the grounds and say, there's a, a roof 100 yards away from the stadium with a clear sight. Someone's got to be on the roof. Local police, I told you to get on the roof. Get on the roof. Or you put the Secret Service. So ultimately, the buck doesn't pass along to somebody. Whoever's in charge is in charge. But really, I think it would be helpful to all of us. I know the process has to be meted out. But there needs to also be a process for protecting the next Trump rally. The, the fact that whoever was in charge in Butler next week is not in charge of a rally in Las Vegas. And so I think you really should say that. You should simply say that the leadership from that event is going through a process, but until that process, they won't be in charge of the Democrat National Convention. That would reassure a lot of people that they won't be in charge of security until it's determined. Can you tell us something to that accord? Yes, sir. So I can tell you that uh, the team planning the Democratic National Convention, that is a national special security event. That team has been on the ground. That's from D.C., uh, with support from our Chicago field office. Uh, but I, I just want to reiterate that, that our, our Pittsburgh field office staff, they are wearing this harder than anybody right now in the Secret Service. Right. They feel completely demoralized. And what I'm trying to do is also let them know that, listen, they need to be focused on the mission at hand. I also have to walk a tightrope here and make sure that I am not well, I, I tainting and, any and, and future from, you from know, discipline point, action. I, I understand, and I have great respect for all the officers, but ultimately someone had to be in charge and someone made a terrible error, and it's an error of judgment. The big error is the roof. But another big error is we have 90 minutes of a suspicious person. Now, uh, Senator Durbin mentioned the rangefinder. None of these things are enough to, to shoot a suspicious person, but they certainly, you would think, would be enough to stop the proceedings. That's where I think you get to the second major management or judgment error of this. Now, Trump's done probably 100 rallies like this. How often at one of his rallies are there 90 minutes of looking at one person and at least a half a dozen pictures of that person? How often does that happen? And is it against protocol to let a proceeding go on when you've got a suspicious person, 90 minutes worth of people talking about this person, and we don't stop the proceeding? Does that defy protocol? So, so Senator, so while there's 90 minutes in total from when he's first identified by local law enforcement, we have about a 30-minute window. But at no time is there anything ever communicated about weapon or, or harm? And I'm I think that's where the weapon, threat- a weapon, you shoot people with a weapon. Sure. Without a weapon, we're talking about people you stop and say, he, he had a backpack, 
which was probably big enough to have the AR-15 in it. In all likelihood, the backpack has that has the weapon in it. So a guy with a big backpack would never get to the perimeter. So once again, a big mistake was not having the perimeter wide enough to prevent people from shooting outside the perimeter. But the thing is, he would have never gotten through the perimeter, right? His backpack would have been checked. But people with big backpacks are very suspicious. And I would think he's been seen six times but you got 20 or 30 minutes of knowing about it. But the thing is, there's all kinds of chatter going on about this. And you would think the chatter going on with the local police is on a police radio and a policeman with that radio is standing in the control tent. So you get that communication. So there's a huge and massive breakdown. But really, my question is, how often has this happened at other rallies where there's a half a dozen pictures and 90 minutes of people talking about a suspicious person? I just can't imagine that it's real common. So, Senator, at, at rallies, there, there are people that come to the attention of law enforcement for a variety of reasons. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they come to our attention for some other activity that might, you know, put it a little bit, uh, uh, hey, we probably need to go check that individual out. Um, this happens, and that's why we, we attempt to locate them. That's why it's important for us to try to find them. Uh, and it's important to have the information. And so local law enforcement did their very level best to try to locate him. They did provide us the photos 30 minutes prior. It just he evaded any detection by law enforcement. But once again, it's the overall person in charge. It's a terrible breakdown. It's a terrible management decision not to have stopped it. There was a chance to stop the proceeding. And the question is not whether there's enough information to take down an individual. It's a much lower standard to say, hey, we're going to wait until we get this individual. The roof and the 90 minutes of it, both I think are failure of your protocol. And I think when that's determined, the person who made these decisions can't be in a position of authority again. 